Aries, Taurus friends, and welcome to the Immaterial Garden for your weekly reading. Thank you so much for the likes, comments, shares, and subscribes, and keeping the channel going. Everything else you really need to know about the session, <coughs> pardon me, sorry, is listed down below in the description box. That includes the astrological weather for today, the rest of this month, as well as who this reading will resonate with, and a link to the cross-watching channel. This Wednesday, I will be doing readings from the perspective of the other person you might be dealing with. This is also kind of a special edition because today is the first of a set of three of Saturn sextile Chiron. The second event will happen on June 24th, and the third and last one will happen on November November 26th, all right? Also, we do have a Sun Chiron semi-square today. Uh, this energy of Saturn sextile Chiron, it could stir up, you know, a lot of um, inner conflict in terms of your internal and core wounding, but it is also an incredible period to be able to uh, manage your healing and to be able to go towards healing in a much more productive, effective, and long-term and stable way, okay, with that influence of Saturn as well, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get into it, my friends. Um, what are the messages? What are the messages for our Aries Taurus friends, especially for the next seven days, possibly beyond? <laughs> All right. Any messages for Aries Taurus friends, especially for the next seven days, possibly beyond? All right. Ooh, all right. Let's go ahead and pull the bottom of the deck to see what the overall energy is. All right, so here we have the waxing crescent moon. Now the waxing crescent moon, that will be towards the end of this moon cycle because we're starting the new moon phase on the 11th where the new moon will be in the sign of Aquarius at 23 degrees and 17 minutes. Uh, if you have any fixed sign placements, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius at 19 to 27 degrees, you may be the most affected by this, okay? But ultimately here, it looks like there is something starting at the end of, uh, of this moon cycle because it goes from the new moon into the waxing crescent, into the first quarter moon, then the waning, the full, the waning gibbous the last quarter and then the waxing crescent moon is right before the new moon cycles back okay all right let's go ahead and take a look here so i feel like that's a lot of timing also just in terms of in terms of seeing it go from almost like implying a full cycle it makes me think this is long-term energy this is long-term um long-term window uh it's a window of opportunity for long-term change okay all right, let's go ahead and take a look here, though. Also with the wax, uh, waxing crescent moon, you know, kind of get the idea that um, something is has closed out or something is ending, something is closing out, and uh, maybe it's also dealing with whatever, you know, tying up the loose ends, dealing with whatever may be associated with whatever it is that you're ending or closing out. Okay, that's what I get, especially if it's going to, the timing on it, uh, it's probably something where it's going to take up until the waxing crescent moon for you to close up the business that you're dealing with is what I'm getting, okay? All right, so essentially it's going to take a full moon cycle for you to be able to do that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, yeah, so it it's about 28 days, okay? So uh, in the moon cycle. Okay, so we start with the beast card energy. So with the beast card energy, I feel like you might be going into protective mode. You might be feeling really negative energy around you. You could also be feeling that people are uh, elevated emotions, all right? Everything just feels a little more raw. Everything feels a little more savage or brutal is what I'm getting here, okay? I feel like people are not, they have no time for like courtesy you know they have no time for the niceties good bedside manner i feel like you're dealing with people that are very angry i feel like you're dealing with people that are very disruptive very angry i feel like they want to rise up and they want to i don't know i feel like they want to satisfy their own pleasures they want to you know i don't know i just get the sense it's not like people that are like marching for like some sort of cause these are people that i just feel like they just 
want to tear everything down. And yet if you ask them, all right, well, what are you going to replace it with? They're like, I mean, they just have no idea. These are people that I, I just get the sense of like nihilism, negativity. And it's almost like, you know, they want to limit, they want to limit, you know, they, they don't, I don't know, it's almost like they don't want to take seriously what is possible, what is possible with hard work, with, um, with focus, with dedication, with grit, all right? I feel like it's just like a bunch of naysayers that are just trying to like tear everything down, whether it is, you know, in the physical space where these could be like, it could be people that are kind of like, um, you know, like a demonstration gone awry. It could be people that are just showing up, you know, to loot things, or it could be people that are destroying property, you know, getting riled up, destroying property or something like that. I also do get the sense this could also be, um, you know, tear things down. So this could be someone who is, you know, hides behind the guise of a mentor or a critic you know, uh, or like, you know what I mean? Someone who's like a constructive critic, but it's like, no, they're really just tearing apart everything around them, everyone around them. I just feel like there's a very negative attitude. It's like a, it's like a dark cloud almost that I get here. Okay. If you know who you're dealing with, if this is a specific person, then I don't know. I feel like if you can stay clear of this person, it's probably going to serve you. Also with the 13, we do get death card energy and the beast does make me think about the devil as well. So could be dealing with a Scorpio, possibly a Capricorn could also be someone that you work with. This could be someone that you work with that, uh, I don't know. I feel like they're a rabble rouser. I feel like maybe, is there like some sort of transition? I feel like maybe your company or your org might be going through some sort of transition. Maybe there's been a change of, of hand, you know, power has exchanged hands or whatever it is, but someone is just like, or a group of people, they are getting so riled up about this transition. And it's like, ultimately here, it's like, they just... <sighs> But it's almost like it's rebel without a cause, you know? It's like, maybe it's just like, maybe they're just getting weirdly affected. It's like, it feels like like raw, un unfiltered Uranus energy almost. But it's like rebel without a cause. You're like, what are you rebelling against? And they're like, what do you got? You know, kind of energy. So I feel like these people are like testing and trying your patience. I feel like for some of you, this could just be an... <laughs> This could just be a child or a teenager that is just like, they just have you at your, at the brink, you know, where you're like, you better, you better calm the F down, okay? You better calm, I don't think you're cursing at your kid, but I feel like you're just like, you better calm the F down, because that's how someone, that's how someone gets cut, okay? <laughs> I just, I just feel like someone has a really fresh mouth. I feel like you're almost like, who taught you how to curse like that? I mean, honestly, Aries Taurus, let's, let's, let's full transparency. We know that you got a mouth on you, okay? You got a potty mouth on you. So maybe it's like that old, um, that old uh, anti-pot commercial where it's like, where did you learn this? Who, you know, who taught you this? How to smoke pot? And the kid's like, I learned it from watching you. So maybe it is you, but I feel like you, you could be a curse word connoisseur and you're like, what the, who the fuck is teaching you this shit? <laughs> I feel like if it was like, even if it had been directed at someone else, you might have been like, a, you know, we still would have been taken aback. You might have laughed a little bit. It's not funny when someone, you're like, if you're going to, oh, those are fighting words. Those are fighting words, kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't know. You might be, you might have to watch this kid. I feel like what the... I, I feel like if you have grounded them, I feel like they are going to try to sneak out, okay? I feel like they're smart enough if you just grounded them, all right? Let's say you grounded them for like two months. I feel like it's, I, I feel like if anything, they're, you know, you're like, they're, they're lucky they didn't get a whooping, but uh, I feel like you grounded them. I feel like they're going to be smart enough, though, when you start the grounding, they're going to just follow all the rules. This, you got a little plant, you got a little conniving kid here. I mean, I just feel like, and, and you know, kudos to the kid, though. I mean, no offense to your child, but, or to your teen, but I'm like, you got to watch this kid. This kid is going to be a fucking mastermind, okay? And not necessarily in, in good ways, right? But I feel like this kid is smart enough to play by the rules a little too much, maybe even. They might give themselves away that way during the beginning of the grounding or the punishment period. Towards the end, when they know you're going to be paying less attention or you're more distracted or maybe they're coinciding it with um, with something like timing like bills or for some of them, I'm going to be honest with you, for some of them, it might actually be your cycle. <laughs> I don't know, but I do feel like this kid, they, 
they're they're planning out everything they're the mastermind i also feel like um they could have siblings so you could be dealing with a group of children be careful when it starts heading towards the end of their punishment make sure that they're not trying to get away with something be prematurely okay all right also here maybe you could just have i just feel like there is just this disrupt disruptive element around you whether it is people planning and plotting or it is uh, just unruly people or just people that don't want to fucking follow the rules is what I'm getting. And you know, Aries Taurus, it's not like, I mean, you're not trying to make people follow, you're not a tyrant, okay? You're not trying to make them follow rules that don't make any sense, but I feel like the one thing that will get under, you, you admire people that can question authority, but at the same time, you know, it's like, um, if it just makes sense you know what i mean if it just makes sense if it's just smart if it just seems like something that probably does benefit you then then you get pissed when people don't like then you know they're just doing it to get a rise out of you or to take a piss they're not necessarily doing it because they have any true intellectual you know um or a, or a intellectual or ethical qualms or quandaries, okay? All right, we have the moth card energy. Now with the moth card energy, you know, the moth is attracted to the flame. I do feel like, again, just be careful. I feel like these people, they are incendiary, but I feel like these could also be, I get the cult of personality. So uh, also that's that's a song by, I think it's, um, is it corrosion, for, corrosion of Conformity? All right? So there is a figure they could be playing where they're playing the devil's advocate. They're getting people riled up like a moth to a flame, okay? Uh, they are attracting in the weak-willed or the weak-minded. That's really what I'm getting here. And I think that you you start to realize, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, if this is a child or if this is a teenager, you, I, I, you bet your ass they have their siblings involved, they've got their friends involved. This kid may actually be running some sort of uh, operation, okay? I'm seeing candy, you know, hopefully it's candy or something like that, where they're like, uh, they're doing something where they sell candy or they do something, they sell treats or something, but for some of them, maybe they're moving into other territories. So you might need to, I'm just saying for those of you that don't want this kid to go in the direction, you don't want the, the streets to have this kid or something like that, I honestly feel like you need to intervene. You need to, uh, for some of you, maybe it's like you want to believe that you can just tell this kid don't hang out with those other kids don't do this whatever but i feel like you actually have to find a way to get that child or teen especially out of that situation out of that environment because i feel like they're too good at it that's the <laughs> I, I've, I, I don't feel like I've ever had this message come through, Aries Taurus, but your kid is so good at the hustle, so good at the game, that it's going to be hard to break them from it. That's what I'm seeing here. If, if, they get a, if they get too much of a taste of it, and they've already gotten a taste of it, okay? I just feel like someone, you need to intervene, but especially, they are the ringleader, all right? They are the ones that all the weak-willed kids, all the weak-minded kids are following. And the funny thing is, Aries Taurus, I feel like a, you have, I feel like it's almost undeniable, a small part of you, okay? Even if it's hidden, even if you know it's not appropriate, you kind of, that kind of makes you weirdly proud of, proud of your child, I feel like, or proud of this person that you've been mentoring or something like that. But I feel like the rest of you is like, oh, hell no, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we ha see we we have the we have the swarm. Okay, so well, first we have the full moon come out. Let's let's pull the put the full moon down. So the full moon energy, and the full moon is actually going to happen on the twenty seventh. So and and after the full moon, that'll be uh, then we'll have the waning gibbous, the last quarter, and then the waxing crescent. So. This is closer to when they're going to launch their plan or they're going to do this thing. For some of you, you know, if it's not your child, then it could be a group of people that are very unpredictable. Maybe you are, uh, I just feel like some, they're planning something, something's going to happen probably the, um, sometime between the full moon and the, the waning crescent moon, all right? All right, uh, what, we have the swarm. So yeah, with the swarm, their movement. Nine is the hermit card energy, which means planning, you know, planning ahead, premeditated strategy. With the nine, that's also the ninth house energy, which is Sagittarius, which is about expansion, which is about travel, all right? So the swarm is on the move. 
closer towards the end of whatever this punishment is or closer towards the end of this moon cycle and especially the period between the full moon and the waxing crescent moon is going to be especially um significant for this for whatever's happening here okay now i feel like for some of you maybe it is um Again, I, for some of you, if you're a parent, this is definitely about it, about you know which child you're talking about. If you only have one child, but you know your child always has a bunch of other kids around, or people are always <laughs> kids are always always coming over for dinner, you know, eating you out of house and home. I kind of get the sense that yeah, your child is the ringleader. They are running some sort of operation, and they are damn good at it. The other thing, funny enough, that I want to say is this kid is so beast mode at it though. You may actually, there might be a small part of you that is tempted to be like, well, I don't know, maybe he's, that's how they're going to pay for college, how we're going to pay for your college or something like that. But just be careful. It's a slippery slope. It's a dangerous, it's a dangerous um, path, okay? You are at the crossroads. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Very interesting. I feel like if it's not your child, though, it feels like this group of people that's been a pain in the ass, these rebels without causes... They're planning something big between the full full moon and the and the uh, waxing crescent moon. Okay. Oh wait, the waxing crescent. That's the one right after the new moon. Sorry about that. All right. Um, okay. Well, print then it's uh, then it's between the waxing crescent to the full moon. So that's still a good period. Anyway, sorry about that. All right. Let's go ahead and move forward here. What is the um, What's the clarification here? What's happening during this time period? Tell me about the, the waxing crescent moon. Well, if that's the case, then the new moon is on the 11th. The waxing crescent moon will, will follow right after, okay? All right, here we have Mercury in Pisces energy. We have, you know, that's there's inspiration, okay? Maybe that's when... Maybe that's when a child... When this person, this child, this group... Maybe that's when it's the... It's right after the inception of the idea. That's when they're starting to conceptualize. They're strategizing. They're planning. You know, the uh, waning crescent moon, I do, or the, sorry, the waxing crescent moon, I do believe that is the moon that's featured in the high priestess card. So it's right after the confusion or right after, you know, endless possibilities, right after the inception, then the high priestess, the two, it's about the conception, it's about the planning, it's about the communicating with each other. So whatever it is, the idea takes seed during the the waxing, or sorry, during the waning, or sorry, during the waxing crescent moon. And um, it makes sense that it would come into fruition or it would, you know, come into effect during the full moon, all right? Or sometime around the full moon. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. But I feel like this is this is not. That's the thing. It has this weird spontaneous sort of air around it, even though it's it's it's. I don't know. I don't know how to. I, I can't quite tell what this person or, or what this group of people is doing. It's almost like they have enough of a understanding uh, of their overall goal or strategy, but then it's like different different parts moving independently so it makes it really hard to pin down but they are definitely converging at some you know for some reason at some you know during this period let's go ahead and see here what is tell me about the full moon energy also sorry to be bumbling about the waxing and waiting sometimes the two words they're so similar and sometimes the n and the x kind of like i don't know why they swap in my mind sometimes or they are now for sure all right let's go ahead and take a look here we have we have Venus in Sagittarius energy, flirtation. So it looks like here with flirtation, it feels like they're going to try to mess with something or they're going to try to, they're going to try to mess with something that they're not supposed to be messing with for the full moon. Maybe for the, maybe for if it's kids or if it's teenage, if it's teenagers, I feel like they might be planning something where like, I don't know if, if it's like um, like a makeout club or I don't know. Maybe they're just like, I, I just feel like there could be something to having to do with sexual activity or something to do with experimenting with sex. Maybe um, they have a network of watching out for each other. They have a network of watching out for each other 
so that they can be at different houses and then they have a network or a, you know whatever it is where they can warn you know specific people like oh you know your parents are like these parents are calling or blah, blah. i don't know it just seems really seems really sophisticated okay if it's a child then i feel like it's mischief flirtation you know it's kind of like a, a playful but there's also w wanting to get something out of it so it's it's like playful but selfish mischief where maybe they're just being naughty because they want attention or maybe they are just like you know, maybe this is actually a reaction to, you know, the energies around them, what's happening around them, okay? Uh, if it is th this group, this weird swarm, this group of people, I kind of feel like uh, they might be doing something, they might be doing something, uh, I don't want to say, I. okay, they might be doing something where they might be looking at, harassment or looking at sexual harassment or looking at you know um that sort of thing and they might be they might be very angry that you know there are consequences or very angry maybe uh i don't know i just kind of get the sense maybe these it's a pushback against uh against like victims coming out it's a pushback against uh especially i i especially celebrities that are coming out uh, about, you know, things that they've gone through, especially having to do with the Me Too movement or having to do with, uh, <laughs> you know, um, inappropriate sexual behavior as well. I feel like, um, I feel like this is normal, but I, I mean, it, it seems normal because, you know, I feel like even though it's, it's a big topic, I feel like it's mostly been, uh, I don't know, I feel like the, the opposing voices have been kind of just waiting, waiting, and been more like, um, I don't know, maybe they're just building up, f I don't know. I just feel like they're gonna start a buzz soon with the swarm is what I'm getting here. So I feel like it, but there's definitely someone who's a ringleader. There's definitely these ringleaders to this, whatever the situation is. And it feels like uh, what the ringleader doesn't know though, if this is a group of people, the ringleader feels like they're protected because they feel like, oh, everyone is doing this or whatever. But I feel like there is something, someone might actually be able to build a legal case against whoever this beast energy is against the ringleader. Uh, just because I, I, I do get the sense that it's like the swarm can't protect them forever, all right? And nothing is going to protect this group of people or protect whatever nothing will protect you from you know the sword of the sword of truth okay and and from the the blind eyes of justice okay because even if no one is watching someone and the, the cosmos the universe sees all right and, and it keeps it keeps track all right let's go ahead and take a look here tell me more about this um sorry let's take a really strange turn let's let's take a look at the swarm energy inheritance this is saturn in scorpio energy yeah i feel like this is this is like a group of people though where i feel like they don't even know what the fuck they're doing they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about or what they're moving towards they're just doing it because someone freaking told them to do it they're just doing it because you know that's what someone that those that, those were my instructions i was just following orders or something like that i don't know Let's take a look here at the beast energy. That's the thing. I think also that might annoy you, Taurus, Aries, Taurus. It's like, if you're going to do the, if you're going to do the crime, then, you know, take credit for it at least, you know, like, don't be a, <laughs> don't be a pussy. Don't be a sack about it. I feel like that, that might be the energy that you feel towards this person. I just feel like you don't have any sympathy or, or mercy towards this person. And I don't think it's because you don't have empathy for other people. I think it's just because you're like, this is what you've brought down upon yourself is kind of what I see here, okay? You know, if it's a child energy, then you're, it's obviously going to be different. But if you're dealing with a group of people that are just being hateful and hurtful, I don't know. I feel like, again, they it's going to get you to your last straw. Here we have uh, Saturn in Leo energy. Saturn in Leo energy, I do feel like, yeah, I feel like you are going to help to try to rein in these fevered ego this fevered ego is what i'm getting here got a little bill hicks coming in maybe this could be someone who's related to politics maybe it could be a celebrity maybe it could be 
you know, uh, the local, you know, the local office hero celebrity. I don't know. It's someone in the community. They're riling things up. They're riling people up. And I feel like you're going to somehow, you know, I feel you contribute somehow to exposing this or to helping to helping to, you know, bring order back. That's what I'm getting. And to see and to see justice done, to see the truth told and see justice done. Let's go ahead and take here, like, let's take a look at this moth energy. We have <laughs> influence, Mercury and Libra energy. Yeah, this person, they know how to, they know how to influence weak-minded people in order to do their bidding. Who the hell is this? Is this a dark Jedi? All right. All right, let's go ahead and see what's at the bottom of the deck, your takeaway guidance. We do have Mercury and Capricorn energy organization, but you may actually be organizing the parents if this is having to do with children, or you might be organizing the community or, you know, the, the social media platform against this person, speaking out against them or their influence is what I'm getting here, okay? All right, thank you so much, friends. Please join me again. Gratitude to the divine, to you and all of creation.